Andre Iguodala will go down as one of the greatest warriors in franchise history, becoming an instrumental do-it-all six-man who was a crucial veteran presence and a finals MVP during the Warriors dynasty run. Without Iguodala, I'm not sure the Warriors even go to five straight finals. That being said, how were eight players drafted before him? Iguodala had a solid career before the Warriors and was even an all-star and slam dunk champion, while being the best player on multiple Sixers teams that made some entertaining playoff runs. As a disclaimer, this is a purely objective video about these players' careers and what they're doing now, and I am not criticizing them as people in any way. Without further ado, this is what happened to the eight players drafted before Andre Iguodala. At number one, we have Dwight Howard. He spent his first eight years with the Magic and was traded to the Lakers in 2012 after having back surgery. He then spent three seasons on the Houston Rockets until 2016 with James Harden and bounced around to the Hawks, Hornets, and Wizards in three consecutive seasons. He won a championship with the Lakers in 2020, and after spending 2021 with the Sixers, he went back to the Lakers this past season. He is an eight-time All-Star and three-time Defensive Player of the Year. Howard has been a valuable role player for the past few years, but it's unclear where he'll sign for his 19th season. At number two, we have Emeka Okafor. He was a productive center for about a decade with the Bobcats, Hornets, and then the Wizards for one season in 2013, but unfortunately, he had a nagging neck injury over four years that kept him out of the NBA. He eventually returned in 2018 to the Pelicans at 35 years old and had a solid stint after DeMarcus Cousins tore his Achilles. He was eventually weighed by the Pelicans and then the Sixers before the 2019 season started. He last played professionally in Korea in 2020, and it looks like he retired after that season. At number three, we have Ben Gordon. He was a super productive scoring guard throughout his first five seasons with Chicago and was even the 2005 Sixth Man of the Year. However, that production didn't continue as much in his stints with Detroit, Charlotte, and Orlando, and he was out of the NBA by 2014. He actually appeared in two preseason games for the Warriors in 2015, but was waived before the season started. Gordon last played in the G League for the Texas Legends in 2017, and that was the end of his pro career. Gordon actually revealed in 2020 that he's been dealing with some mental health issues, so I hope he's doing better now and that those things have gotten resolved. At number 4, we have Sean Livingston. Livingston came straight out of high school playing for the Clippers and unfortunately suffered what's considered to be one of the most devastating leg injuries in all of sports. He almost got his leg amputated but was able to come back and be a solid backup point guard throughout his career. He eventually found his home with the Warriors in 2015 and played there until his retirement in 2019. Livingston had one of the smoothest and most efficient mid-range games we've ever seen and became widely known for that. He is now a player consultant for the Warriors. At number 5, we have Devin Harris. He was an overall solid point guard for many years, specifically on the Mavs and Nets, and even had a breakout season in 2009 where he made the All-Star game. He had since with the Jazz and Nuggets as well, and eventually spent his final season with Dallas in 2019. If I'm not mistaken, I believe he currently works for the Mavericks in their broadcasting team. At number 6, we have Josh Childress. He had a solid first four years in the NBA with Atlanta as a tall scoring guard, but unfortunately didn't get some more consistent NBA opportunities after. He had short stints with Phoenix, Brooklyn, and New Orleans, as well as some pro stints in Greece, Australia, Japan, and the G League throughout his career. Childress has been involved with real estate after his pro career as he created a real estate fund with one of his former college teammates at Stanford. At number 7, we have Luol Deng. He spent his first 9.5 seasons with Chicago and developed into a two-time All-Star with his solid all-around scoring and defensive presence. He had some stints with the Cavs, Heat, Lakers, and Minnesota to end off his career. Deng recently reunited with former Bulls teammates Derek Rose and Joakim Noah in Senegal to take part in the NBA Academy Africa. And finally, at number 8, we have Rafael Araujo. This is the only picture I could find of him in the NBA. His career only lasted three seasons with Toronto and Utah and was out of the NBA entirely by 2007. He played for a variety of pro teams throughout the next seven years. I couldn't really find much information on him though, so I'm not entirely sure where he is now or whether he played professionally past 2014. For a quick channel update, I will be taking a break for at least the next week and a half, depending on when I feel like making videos again. I'm starting up college soon, and I really haven't taken time off since my summer break started in early May. I'm hoping to rethink a bit of how I approach this channel and what direction I want to take it with regards to basketball content. Thank you for watching, thank you for the support, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.